God bless you, brothers and sisters. My name is Pastor Trey Wolfolk, and I serve as the assistant pastor at the Aimwell Baptist Church, also called The Well. We are so grateful that you chose to worship with us via our virtual worship experience, and let me be the first to welcome you, and it is our prayer and our hope that your experience is both refreshing and renewing through the worship and the word that goes forth today in our virtual experience. Listen, if you happen to ever be visiting the Mobile area, we would love to have you to come worship with us any Sunday. We're located at 500 Earl Street, downtown Mobile, Alabama. And of course, if you're looking for more information about our church, you can visit us at thewellmobile.org. I don't want to take any more of your time. Welcome to our virtual worship experience, and we hope it is a blessing to you. I'll see you at the end. Thank you. 
word that helps us to make it through another week. A word that helps us to lift up our bow down hand. And God, we're going to be careful to give your name the praise and the glory. It's in your son Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. 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 If you would grab your Bibles, grab your Bibles, or if you would have it on your tablet, tap with me, as my pastor says. Uh, well, first again, we want to welcome you again to our virtual worship experience. Uh, just on behalf of our pastor, Dr. Michael E. Jackson, you're welcome to the sanctuary here at the Angwell Baptist Church. Amen. I want to preach this text this morning. I preach this text this morning. It's found in Mark chapter 16. Mark chapter 16. Verses 1 through 4. Mark 16, verses 1 through 4. Mark 16, verses 1 through 4 says it like this. Now the Sabbath was passed. Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome bought spices that they might come and anoint him. Get this, very early in the morning, on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had arisen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone had been rolled away. For it was very Lord, let me read that, that our key text in verse number four. It says, who will roll the stone away from the door of the tomb for us? But I love what verse four says. It says, but when they, when they looked up, they saw that what they were worried about had already been worked out. I want to talk very simply from this thought. Keep walking. Keep walking. Keep walking. Interesting, brothers and sisters, a man who was going through deep waters of fear called a Christian science practitioner in anguish, and he said to him, you don't know what I'm going through. Right. He says, I'm going through hell. It's interesting that this man says that he's going through hell because what he is simply describing, he's describing that he's in a situation to which he does not know how to get himself out of it. Right. He's in a situation to which he has no solution for. All right. But catch this, brothers and sisters. He calls him and says, you don't know what I'm going through. Perhaps I'm talking to somebody who may be viewing this worship experience, who may even be in the sanctuary with me today, who may be struggling because you're saying people don't know right. how much hell you're going through. People don't know how much of the struggle you're going through. But what I love about this story is what the Christian science practitioner said to him. He said, sir, understand this, that though you may be going through hell, understand that this is no place to stop. Right. He right. simply said that just because you're going through it doesn't mean that this is a stopping place. But you've got to make up in your mind that in spite of what you're going through, that if you're going through hell, you've got to keep going. Can I tell you, brother and sister, that's the hopeful words that I have for you this morning. I know that the, the status of our nation seems like we're going through a bunch of hell and struggle because we don't we have a virus that's running rapid through our world. But can I tell you that in spite of the hell that we are going through, we've got to make up in our mind that we're going to keep going. I wish I had some help in the building. Is there anybody here that's viewing this telecast that can say, I'm just going to keep on walking? Because the truth of the matter is, as bad as things are, this is not a place to stop. This is not a place for you to sideline yourself to give up on God. Can I tell you, I wish I had some old saints that would say, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. I love this pastor because when I look at this text, it shocks me because these women seem to have heard the same conversation. They were going through a literal hell. Because the Bible says that at the moment of Mark chapter 16, they're dealing with the first, the death of Jesus. And also they're dealing with the absence of disciples. And now they're also dealing with the threat of death at the hands of the Jews. Did you catch that? They're dealing with the death of Jesus, the absence of the disciples, and now the Jews are threatening to kill them. That's why some scholars have suggested that they left going to the tomb 
They left there literally very early in the morning. Yeah. Let me do a little, set, a, a little exercise on that, that word very early. But you'll understand, in the Greek, it literally means that they left between the hours of 3 a.m. and 6 a.m. Right. This is, uh, by, by, by some scholars, have just this was the darkest times during that time. This was the darkest time of the night that they could have they could have left. And some suggested that the reason why they did it at night was because they didn't want the Jews to see them going to the tomb. They were living in fear. They were living in struggle because now the Savior who they've been following for three years now has died. And then the 12 homeboys that he's been rolling with, now they're nowhere to be found. Isn't it funny how sometimes when you're at the apex of your life, everybody's around you. But as soon as you go to your cross, everybody wants to leave you. But here's the good news of the text that though the disciples left, these women said, we're still going to walk with Jesus. And I'm wondering if there's anybody around here that can testify that don't other people make me turn away. That I'm not going to give up on God because God can give up on me. That's what he's doing. And that's what they're trying to teach us. But they simply say that though Jesus is gone and the disciples are absent, we're still going to walk with Jesus. So two quick things I have for you, brother and sister, then I'll take my seat. It is the reason why they were able to keep walking in spite of their fear, Jesus' death, and the acts of disciples was simply this. Because they learned that you have to be able to have questions without quitting. Let me say that again. You have to learn how to have questions without, without quitting. What I love about this, when you read this text, you'll discover that when it says that they said among themselves, who's going to roll the stone away? What you'll discover is, is that in the Greek, it's in the present tense, which simply means that it's a continuous action. Which means that while they were on their way, they kept saying to themselves, who's going to roll the stone away? See, sometimes we think that the sin is questioning God. But the truth of the matter is, brothers and sisters, there is no sin in questioning God because Jesus was on the cross and he asked the question, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? So the sin, brothers and sisters, is not in our, in our ability, in our tendency to question how things are going to work out. But the sin is when you allow your questions to make you quit. All right. All right. That's the sin, brothers and sisters, and that whenever you, you have questions, yeah, you can have your questions. Yeah, we all have our questions, but that's not the sin. The sin is when you allow your questions to turn into doubt to make you leave the God that's been good to you before the coronavirus ever showed up. What I love about this, what I love about this text is this simply, is that notice that they're walking together to the tomb. Yes, sir. And they keep discussing who's going to roll the stone away. Yeah. Now, what, 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 what shocks me is, is that while they kept discussing who was going to do it, nobody in the group ever talked about turning around. All right. Y'all don't know when to get happy. Now, I'll say it again. They, were, they kept saying, who's going to roll the stone away? I don't know who's going to roll the stone They kept questioning among themselves who was going to roll the stone away, but nobody in the group decided that they were going to turn around. I'm going to find somebody else I can preach to. It said that they were on their way to the tomb and they kept questioning among themselves but they decided that while we may be questioning, we ain't going to quit this thing. Because I, can I tell you brothers the reason why that there was nobody in that group who was going to turn around because you got to understand Mary Magdalene had been playing with some demons at one point in her life and Jesus had delivered her from her, from her demons. Because, and the reason why Mary because he turned around my life. I wish I had some help in here. And you ought to hang around some people in your life that's got a testimony. You don't need anybody in this season that's weak. That doesn't have to. You need some people that's gone through some hell. That's gone through some high water. Because they can still encourage you to say, keep on walking. Would you help me preach? I know you sit at home. Won't you help me? And I said, keep on walking. Because if you just learn how to keep on walking, in spite of how you feel. That's why you got to be connected with people who are not just miracles of Jesus. Yeah. Uh, but notice Salome has been following Jesus uh, for three years. Yeah. Now she was there when the multitude was there. Yeah. She was there when the disciples were there. Yeah. But once the crowd got deep, once the disciples got action, Salome says, I'm still going to walk with him. That's why 
you need some people in your life that are loyal to what God told you to do. You need some people that are loyal because some people are fair weather people. You don't need those people in your life. But the, when the storms come, they'll change on you. But is there anybody here that can say, I need some loyal people that can say, come one day from day to day. I would check somebody. I need you to tap that screen and say, neighbor. Say, neighbor. If you don't walk with me, you got to have a tough
when God delivers us uh, from people who we know and things that we know about, because there are some known threats yeah. that we have. There are some known people that are working against us, but the shout out God that he is not just working out the stuff you know. Yeah. Yeah. But God has a way of working out the stuff you didn't even know. I wish I had some help in here. But the, 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 the blessing of this brothers and sisters, a lot of us are praying that God delivers us, deliver us from a coronavirus to keep us safe. But can I tell you, you don't know how many infected hands you already shaken this year, even before this ever came out. You don't know how many situations that you didn't know was going to happen. You know some stuff that you didn't even see coming, but did God protect you then? And I need to say it again, if he did it before, he can do it again. I need you to help me preach it right where you're at home. I said, if he did it before,
for your word. Thank you, God, that, that our faith doesn't depend on being in a building. But God, you've been keeping us outside of this building our entire life. And so God, even right where we are at home, we still give your name praise. We still give your name glory. And God, help us when we feel like stopping. When we feel like walking away. Help us to keep walking in the right direction. God, we thank you for this worship and this word. We thank you for our time. God, we pray that something today was a blessing to your people. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Everybody say amen. God bless you, brothers and sisters. It's my hope and my prayer that the worship and the word was both refreshing and renewing for you today. And if by chance something was shared today that was a blessing to you, would you do us the honor and the privilege of sharing our video with your family, your friends, your coworkers, your loved ones, and even your neighbors? And would you also do us the favor of sharing this video on your various social media platforms? Listen, we don't want to close our virtual worship experience without, first of all, offering Christ to somebody. Perhaps somebody is viewing this for the first time and you've never developed a relationship with Jesus Christ. I cannot explain and cannot tell you enough that today is the best day and right now is the best time to give your life to Christ. If you want to be saved today, all you have to do is to comment at the bottom of this video and just say, I want to be saved. One of our one of our team members is standing by to help take you through that process to introduce you to Jesus Christ. Also, brothers and sisters, there are some that have inquired about different ways that they may give towards this ministry and the vision of the Aimwell Baptist Church. If you're looking for a way to give, well, all you have to do is just follow these prompts.